Good evening. <laughs> it's good to see you here on Parish Prayers and Beyond. And it's uh, Wednesday. It's Wednesday during Holy Week. And yes, that was the air unit just kicking off. Kind of strange. We have this weather that's hot, cold. <laughs> but we're here on a Wednesday of Holy Week. And I wanted to talk to you about what happened on Wednesday of Holy Week so many years ago as Jesus was on his way to the cross. Have you ever wondered what was going on on that Wednesday? I mean, we, uh, some of us know that on Thursday, uh, he shared the Passover meal with his disciples. Uh, most of us, I would say, know that Friday he died. And then on Sunday, early in the morning, they found the grave empty, the tomb empty. He had risen from the dead. But what about Wednesday? What happened on Wednesday of that week? Let's look and see. John, Matthew, Mark, and Luke all discuss this one incident uh, or this what happened on Wednesday. Uh, but John gives us a more informational uh, piece uh, on what happened. So let's look at what he wrote in John chapter 11. Therefore, the chief priests and the Pharisees convened a council and were saying, what are we doing? For this man is performing many signs. If we let him go on like this, all men will believe in him, and the Romans will come and take away both our place and our nation. What is going on here? Well, the chief priest and the Pharisees were, are very concerned about Jesus. He's, he's gathering a, a following. I mean, he's, he's accumulating a, a crowds of people who are following him and listening to him. They're afraid that they are going to lose control, the, the control they have over the people. And they don't want this man coming out of nowhere and taking them, the people, away. Uh, and having them following him, especially when he said some things that are a little controversial, uh, according to the chief priests. If Jesus continued to have this influence on them, yeah, things were not going to look good for the chief priests. Uh, and actually, they would not, it would not look good in the eyes of Rome. Rome would look and say, wait a minute, can you not control your own people? Can you not handle your own folks? Can you not deal with someone who comes out of nowhere uh, and starts collecting them together and, and gathering crowds and all like this? Can you not do something about this? Rome would come in and say, hey, we'll handle this. We'll take care of this and uh, you'll lose the temple. Uh, you obviously cannot handle things on your own, so uh, we're going to handle it for you. As they sit worrying about Jesus, Caiaphas, the high priest, speaks up. He says to them, You know nothing at all, nor do you take into account that it is expedient for you that one man die for the people and that the whole nation not perish. Now, he did not say this on his own initiative, but being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus was going to die for the nation. <laughs> And not for the nation only, but in order that he also, that he might also gather together into one the children of God who are scattered abroad. Wow! Caiaphas is not prophesying under the direction of God, and yet he is. But what he said came true. He was worried about the Jewish people. It would be better if one man died than the whole Jewish people be scattered and messed up and uh, taken over by Rome like that. That's not good. And so it's better for one man to die than for him to lead the people somewhere else beyond what they wanted as the chief priests. They agreed with him, uh, not understanding that in the death of this one man, salvation would be made available to all and the gathering of all believers together would take place. Caiaphas meant Jesus had to be killed, but God intended the priest words as a reference to his substitutionary atonement. Jesus' death would abolish the old system in God's eyes by fulfilling all its types and shadows and uh, and, and indications and uh, nuances of, of what, you know, what it was talking about early on. Talking about the sacrificial system. 
you know, setting it up for the people to understand that Jesus is the ultimate sacrifice. His death was not only for the Jews, but also for the world, thus making a new body from both. John tells us, uh, so from that day on, they planned to kill him. Therefore, Jesus no longer continued to walk publicly among the Jews, but he but went away from there to the country near the wilderness into a city called Ephraim, and there he stayed with the disciples. His time to die had not yet come, and he was not about to let that happen. He, he, he knew that he could not die then, and so he, he hid out. He hid out. Another event happened on this Wednesday. Matthew tells us, then one of the twelve, named Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, What are you willing to give me to betray him to you? And they weighed out thirty pieces of silver to him. From then on, he began looking for a good opportunity to betray Jesus. Where was Jesus during all of this on this Wednesday? He was making preparation with his disciples to to uh, observe the Passover meal with them. He was making preparation. Jesus said to them, go into the city or, or go into the city uh, to a certain man and say to him, the teacher says, my time is near. I am to keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. The disciples did as Jesus has directed them and they prepared the Passover. That comes from Matthew chapter 26 verses 18 and 19. A lot going on on this Wednesday, a long time ago. God is at work through it all. You, you can rest assured that God is still at work in everything that's going on now. Uh, think, thinking about those in Ukraine, things looking very bleak for them, and maybe even you are going through a tough time. Let me remind you that God is with you. Let me remind you that God is at work. God is not sitting idly by just watching things happen to you. God is at work. Reach out to Him, will you? After a few, uh, after this time of prayer that I'm going to pray with you, I ask that you continue to join us in prayer. There will be some announcements after those prayer items, uh, but there's, uh, there's some prayer items we would love for you to join us in. Can I pray for you now? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your grace. Father, we thank you for loving us. We thank you for your forgiveness. We thank you for sending Jesus into this world to die as a perfect sacrifice on that cross to provide for us salvation. Oh, Father, and, and forgiveness of sins. Oh, Lord, I pray if there's someone that needs to make that decision to follow you, that they would do that today. Lord, no one is never too old to make this decision. If there's someone that needs to make this decision, I pray that they would. Lord, as we move toward Easter, may we all focus on what you did for us through Christ. Father, I pray for those who are sick, those who are in need. Lord, we pray for them. Uh, Lord, that you would bring them strength and healing and comfort. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. There's going to be an opportunity uh, on the screen uh, during the announcement time for you to give to an organization called uh, Jew, let's see, it's called Jerusalem International Prayer, Jerusalem Prayer Team International. That's it. And you'll have an opportunity to give to their work in Ukraine. They're already there. They've already been there. Uh, they were there before all of this mess started and they're providing humanitarian aid to the Jews that are there. Uh, and if that's something you would like to help with, there's an opportunity in the announcements. You can stop, pause, uh, scan the code. It'll take you to uh, directly to the website. Uh, but thank you for joining us today for Parish Prayers and Beyond on this Wednesday of Holy Week. I pray that you'll find a place to worship this Sunday, Easter Sunday. Praise be to God for what He has done for us. Until next time, on Parish Prayers and Beyond, I'm Brother Craig. You take care. <music>